Welcome to the Now I'm Ashley. I'm John. We are rounding out earnings call season. Ooh, almost over. Yeah. Uh, now it's Activision's turn. But rather than comment on any exciting new video game announcements, the company touted some rather surprising statistics about just how much money they make from all your loot boxes and your bright engrams. This is why microtransactions are a thing. Yep. If you're somehow still wondering why the heck all these games keep microtransacting you out the ass, Activision. That seems like a verb. Microtransacting. Um, Activision, well, they got literally billions of reasons to keep doing it. That was with a B. Billions. According to their earnings report, that's because they made $4 billion last year alone just from microtransactions. Blah. What? Oh, that's a whole lot of money. Uh, plus, they talked about the recent player backlash to Destiny 2 and even confirmed some recent rumors that have been going around about this year's Call of Duty. Yeah, thanks uh, for so many solid headlines, earning calls, but first... We appreciate you. Yeah, it's good times. Uh, hey, let's talk about all that microtransaction money. Activision, That's a lot. Activision, they said in its briefing, shut up, Brian, that the company's in-game net bookings, which pertain to items like DLC sales, loot boxes, and in-app purchases on mobile games, totaled more than $4 billion in 2017. Now, obviously, that is a whole lot of money, but what makes the $4 billion number even crazier is that the company's total revenue was $7 billion, which Whoa. means that, yes, they make way more money now from microtransactions than actually selling games, including huge games like Call of Duty and Destiny 2. So people really, 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 really love dropping money on bright engrams and weapon skins and overwatch emotes and crazy stuff. This is why. Well, that headline is very attention grabbing. For good reason. It's important to make a note about where all that money comes from because it might change your perspective just a little bit. Activision also reported that half of that $4 billion, so roughly around $2 billion, we can do math, came from their subsidiary, King. Gross. The makers of Candy Crush. So that means $2 billion of it was from mobile efforts, and the other $2 billion was from PC and console games like Call of Duty. Wow! Two billion dollars from Candy Crush. Play another game! Huh, okay, so that makes the number uh seem a little bit less absurd. It's just a different absurd. A little bit absurd. Uh well. It's a little more in line with what we've seen from some other publishers. EA's in-game microtransactions on console and PC also totaled around $2 billion, for instance. So, you know, we're down from like $4 billion to $2 billion. That's like just under what they make from actual games. Okay, and the idea that Activision's micro, uh, that their uh, microtransaction money makes up more than its actual game sales isn't all that bizarre either. A publisher Ubisoft similarly makes mon more money from live services and microtransactions than they do from their digital game sales as well. So, if it hasn't been made clear enough already, this is why live services and games as a service and microtransactions and loot boxes are every publisher's favorite buzzwords right now and why Activision cares so much in its earnings report about players spending 50 minutes a day in Activision games, about 55 million monthly active users, and about the amount of viewers for things like Overwatch League. This is a metric they refer to as player investment and one that they've been nurturing for the past several years for this exact reason. All that nurturing is so that you will give them more money. Yeah, seeing numbers reach this kind of magnitude gives people one of two reactions. Either they think it's ridiculous and no video game company should be making that kind of money on something that isn't directly a video game, or they tend to come down on the side that says it's fine as long as they do it right and they don't try to rip people off. Right, which is going to come down to matters of personal preference and opinion in a lot of terms. Uh, in, in terms of Activision Blizzard, uh, their track record kind of all over the map. Call of Duty has sometimes been criticized for its handling of microtransactions. That seems to have leveled out a little bit. Uh, for the most part, gamers seem okay with that franchise's microtransaction philosophy barring. There have been a few missteps here and there, but they haven't been as egregious as some others. Yeah. Meanwhile, Overwatch is often held up as one of the examples of how to do loot boxes right. And I gotta agree with this. They're completely optional. Uh, they feature content that can be earned in game and are filled with cosmetic items and bonuses only. Also, because Blizzard doesn't charge for 
like ongoing content. They they fund the events and yeah. the new stuff they do based on those, so you don't have to buy a season pass. Yeah, buy the game, you play the game. Yeah, that's so you, it's, do. you know, that's been, yeah, widely held as the standard. Yeah, however, uh, Blizzard's Hearthstone has been criticized over the years. We're getting a big thumbs down from Brian off camera. Yeah. Uh, expansion. Yes, Wait, that's Brian, how they get you to play the game. Brian, how much money have you spent in Hearthstone? $700. Oh my god! Chase the microphone and get to the $700. Wow. Just want to make sure. Let's not talk about Marvel Puzzle Quest on my phone. Anyways, uh, it's been criticized, you know, for years of, for its bar of entry being really, really expensive. Like $700 expensive. These kind of people. This wow. Is a, this is a You're a whale! <laughs> You're a whale, Brian. Uh, there are some other games in Activision's portfolio that haven't gotten away quite so clean. Uh, one of the most high-profile ones would have to be Destiny 2. Seems to have had a monthly revolt penned on the calendar ever since it first launched. That regularly scheduled Guardian Uprising hasn't always been because of microtransactions, although that's been the cause for quite a few of them, albeit indirectly. When Destiny 2 first dropped, players were incensed to discover that shaders were consumable and available for purchase via Eververse. Uh, there was also that whole incident with the game not dishing out XP like it should, which again, seemed like a tool to push players towards microtransactions. But long story short is that players haven't been super happy and microtransactions have played a part in that. Uh, interestingly enough, Activision actually acknowledged player unease during their earnings call. The company told investors that there are, quote, some real sentiment issues from the player base, mostly due to end game content. Thanks for that reaction. Really appreciate it. That's that's the way to put it. So CEO Eric Hirschberg said the plan by Bungie is to make Destiny 2 less of a grind and provide a more direct path to rewards. He went on to add that the right plans are in place to fix things in the long run. You know, like the upcoming next major expansion, which Activision said will help reconnect players to the game. Yep, nothing like spending more money to make you forget about how mad you were about the last money you spent. Right. Despite all that, Activision did reveal that Destiny 2's first expansion, Curse of Osiris, did sell better than the original original game is first expansion, which is interesting largely because you hear so much about player drop off mm -hmm. and people uh, not being interested in checking it out or people who didn't want to get the DLC because they were burdened about the uh, microtransactions in the game. And yet it still outsold the first game's first expansion. So it's still stepping up. In other earnings call news, Activision also confirmed what everyone already knew at this point, that Treyarch is indeed behind Call of Duty 2018. What? No. <laughs> CEO Hirschberg said he's excited about the game, but can't talk more about it just yet. That's because if we're going on schedule, we should be getting a reveal end of April, beginning of May, and a leak a couple weeks before that. Treyarch followed that announcement up with a tweet saying that they're looking forward to sharing more with their fans. Again, nothing's too surprising considering all the rumors that have been floating around, namely that, well, Treyarch's building a more modern Call of Duty Black Ops 4 to follow up last year's Call of Duty World War II. Yeah, and there's no doubt that it will bring in any less of that microtransaction cash than the publisher is already experiencing with all of those other titles. For me, even the idea that uh, for like putting the king money aside, that they make three billion dollars in games and they make two billion dollars in microtransactions, that is a concerning trend if you're hoping that loot boxes and microtransactions are going away, because They're that not says very going much going anywhere. Not. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not great news, but it's news. <laughs> what do you guys think of Activision being microtransaction of billionaires? We've probably got a few guesses about how that makes you feel, but go ahead and let us know in the comments. For future updates on the biggest publishers in the industry, remember to like this video. If you're new around here, subscribe to the No. No DLC required. Yet. Yeah, we, we'll do the offer free. <laughs> I just walked up to That's them and right, I was, like, well, I was like, what do you serve in a horn? And they were like, we serve uh, mead, or, and I was like, give me a mead. I got a mead. Stop giving me mead. The one thing nature gave me. It took no. away everything else of like survivability and actual growing up ability. But it was like, you know what? We're not going to give you hangovers. At all?